Well, I'm very excited about this. You know we love to focus on companies with disruptive technologies, game-changing business models. They're transforming particular industries. That's why we go off the tape. We look at, uh, at companies that aren't public. Uh, like one to consider is consider back to the roots. This is a privately held company founded in a frat house in 2009, which is trying to change the way we think about the process of procuring food and what goes into it. At first, Back to the Roots sold Grow Your Own Mushroom Kits. We'll look at those in a second. But since then, they've expanded to all sorts of other ready-to-grow products. And as of last year, they started selling ready-to-eat foods that you can buy at the grocery store, including, yes, organic, non-GMO breakfast cereals. This company is on the mission to, and I'm going to quote, undo food. Their term for taking food out of the laboratory, away from all the artificial ingredients, put it back in the dirt where you know exactly what's going, what, what's going into your produce and into your body. I think these guys really understand the zeitgeist at a time when the millennial generation has become very skeptical about the traditional food chain, and I think they've been skeptically right. So let's sit down with Dekil Aurora and Alejandro Velez. They're the founders and co-CEOs of Back to the Roots. To learn more about the company and their vision for its future. Mr. Aurora, Mr. Please, welcome to Man of Money. All right, who wants to tell me about the frat house, and then we'll talk about undoing food. <laughs> Yeah, well, first off, Jim, honored to God. be here. And before that, we want to send you a big Back to the Roots booyah. Well, I'll take yeah. it. I saw that. And you guys know how, how important gardening is to me, so it's really near and dear. Absolutely. I yeah, know this is uh, uh, one crazy idea that started out at UC Berkeley. We had zero background in food. We were actually going into investment banking and consulting. <laughs> Fabulous. Heard this random fact that you could potentially grow mushrooms on coffee ground waste, and nobody had ever done it. Took that idea, grew our first bucket out of my fraternity <laughs> kitchen, literally right. out, of, out of college. And from that day on, we said, you know, took that bucket, walked it into the Berkeley Whole Foods store. First produce guy we saw. You did? Literally yeah. first produce guy we saw. Ended up uh, through their culture of, you know, embracing vendors. Just said, Walter, Walter Rob checked it out? Yes, yeah. and a big supporter of everything that we've done from the very beginning, yeah. yeah. Well, it's interesting. A lot of the food chain guys who were somewhat skeptical are also caring, right? You've got some big backers who are not, who are atraditional in terms of what you're doing. Yeah, I think everyone's realizing that there's, the pendulum has kind of swung too far where we've been yeah. disconnected from our food and it's, it's got to come back. And it's kind of almost, almost like we're entering this third wave. We talk about a food around radical transparency. And I think people are realizing that, especially millennials now are asking, like, where's my food come from? And it's been exciting to kind of see the support build around that. And, you know, look, I'm fortunate enough to have done okay in life. I'm lucky enough that I have a little land. But if I didn't, like, my daughter has a one-bedroom apartment, she could use garden in a can, right? Absolutely. Well, what started out as just this random idea of taking waste and growing food, which is what got us excited yeah. about this sure. to begin with, is, I mean, to us was the reality that we ourselves had never grown food in our lives. So when we grew mushrooms out of coffee waste, we were like, this is the coolest thing we've ever seen. Sure. And that inspired us to basically say, hey, let's make food really easy, really fun, really sustainable, and bring it into the home. So it's not about growing outside, especially with the millennials being in indoors. We said, let's create a whole product line around getting kids and families yeah. to not only grow food in their kitchen, but also in the classroom. Well, you know, let's talk about the educational, yeah. because I think that this is probably the most important. One of the things that, that I like Mark Cuban, he's old friend, he says, look, all the new companies that are successful, they have a component that is social. This education is, it's really, you know, you do Sodexo, which does food service, yeah. but you also do the schools. Yeah, and you know, it's really started organically, for lack of words, you know, it was our, we had our mushroom kits, and we'd, you know, start selling them in, in Whole Foods, at Home Depot, farmers markets, and we started getting you know, it's like thousands of photos coming in, and it wasn't the foodies and the chefs, it was the kids. That was, that was just funny, and we actually have a program. Anyone who posts a photo now on our, on our Facebook page of the fully grown mushroom kit, we donate one to an elementary school classroom of their choice, and uh, you know, the mushrooms, they grow in 10 days, and I think for kids, it's that idea of, of instant gratification almost. How do we make food fun, easy, well-designed? And, 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 and the president's heard of it, right? <laughs> yeah. How did that come about? The huge honor was uh, they named Back to the Roots one of the two green companies out of California, and uh, we had. That is uh, a great honor because it's the it's the it's really the hotbed of green. So it's not like that you know you, you're coming from some place where you're the only guys doing it. Yeah, yeah, well, it was it was definitely. I mean, I think it, in so many ways we're just trying to stand on the shoulders of the brands that kind of built this industry, the natural organic food space, and now kind of how do we take it to the next generation? Okay, so let's say I wanted to buy stone grain flour. You know, this is the stuff that was stone yeah. grain. This is the stuff that we, that my kids would, you know, they would never <laughs> buy frosted flakes, I mean, ever. Where do I get this? 
So we've actually got a really uh, amazing partnership with Whole Foods Market. So uh, the same. Are you in the 365? In the new 365 in LA? We're working on. It. I know. We, did you get a chance to visit? The no, story? I really want to. Walter's telling me it's unbelievable. <laughs> Yeah, we're, you know, our whole, I mean, our whole visions aligned so closely and uh, we ended up launching with them uh, actually just this April. So it's a brand new launch and it's uh, going super well. And uh, again, the, the whole idea for us is imagine if you can connect the dots between growing food and eating food. And the way we see it in the store is connecting dots between produce and grocery. So Absolutely. this idea of whether you're growing your own food or eating packaged food, it should be one and the same, Jim. It should be- I agree. Know exactly who the farmer is, where it comes from with the cereal. We actually tell you directly on the box, each and one of the ingredients, where they're grown, where you know how to make it at home. We tell you the recipe uh, on the well, box. I love that because the Whole Foods has the pictures of them, but here you got them right here now, but yeah. Amazon's involved too. Yeah, we're actually really close with them uh, on the Amazon Launchpad program, so we've been Amazing, talk about accessibility. What a platform to kind of make sure our cereal is accessible to anyone, anytime. And so they've been an amazing partner for that. And then finally, a company that's really trying to reinvent itself, and I gotta give Denise more, I gotta give her credit. Campbell Soup is involved, right? Mm -hmm. They're invested. Yeah, so we actually just did a, a Series A. It's the first real fundraise. Mm -hmm. It's a $10 million round, and uh, it's actually called Acre Ventures, the, the partners right. that are investing, and it's the limited, limited partners are Campbell's, but it's, completely arm's length away. But she do it with so, Bolt House? I mean, is she doing it with her Bolt House division or is it just they're just, they're just giving you money? No. Yeah, so in, in, you know, we're working really, you know, Jeff Dunn and Lucas Mann. Right, sure, and, uh, I know this, yeah. And Sam Cass is uh, one of the other partners with a with, uh, former executive chef of the White House who's also very passionate about schools and getting, the whole idea is in retail, but at the same right. time, we've gotta get kids because if they of can course. get trained to eat healthier food with less sugar, uh, I think that's how we can make a real impact. Oh, absolutely. Well, look, I got, I got to wrap this up. I mean, you're not public, so I can say I just want you guys <laughs> to do fabulous. Okay, I want you to do fabulous. Thank you very that's much. That's Nikhil Aurora and Alejandro Velez. They're the founders and co-CEOs of Back to the Roots. And I'm all in, okay? I'm all in with this company. Stick with Kramer. Thank you, guys. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.